Despicable Me! Hi everyone and welcome back. We visited Orlando May June 2019 staying on International Drive but what we're sharing with you today is what we ate at Universal Studios. If you've watched us before you'll probably know we all love food especially little Jimmy. There are some great options in the theme parks but also table service and quick service locations on City Walk which may be more suitable for you. I'll be sharing with you all the meals and snacks that we purchased on the holiday and what we thought of them as well. Let's get started. We're starting off at the Today Cafe at Universal Studios. This is one of the newer dining locations and we didn't really consider eating here before, but you can access this whilst everyone else is in early entry. So we couldn't get into the early entry this day, so we thought we'd go and try a little bit of breakfast. They've got the pastry counter where you can get your food straight away, but if you're ordering hot, they give you this placard and they'll bring it over to you. We all decided to have the same thing, the ham, egg and cheese, but you'll see on this board it said it includes roasted tomatoes, which suits me and Jim. So we ordered one with tomatoes, one without tomatoes, and you can see that tomato just peeking out down the bottom there. I tell you what though, they were absolutely lovely and really did add a lot of flavour to the sandwich. You can see here you get two halves plus the pot of fruit for one meal. Drinks are not included, you add the drinks on as extra. All of us absolutely loved this sandwich and it did fill us up. I'd say it was plenty enough for two adults and one child to share. The pots of fruit are really big and you've got melon, pineapple, strawberry, berries. There was a really good bit of variety there. You can see it was $8.99 plus tax for the meals, 20, around $20 for both of them, which I think is pretty good value for a breakfast and it was really, really yummy. Next up, we're over at Diagon Alley for the Leaky Cauldron. Hogsmeade does also have a Harry Potter dining location called the Three Broomsticks, but we didn't eat there this trip. This was our first time to the Leaky Cauldron and we came for breakfast. Jimmy was hungry this day, so we only ordered one sort of main dish like off the menu. He was going to go for the pancakes, but he changed his mind to the traditional breakfast. Not the American breakfast, the traditional one. One thing we really liked about this location is after you've ordered, someone shows you to a table, so you haven't got people sat there hogging tables. They then give you a magic candle where they'll bring your food over to you, and they have just got a table tracker in the bottom. Sorry to ruin the magic there, but it uh, added to the illusion for Jimmy anyway. <laughs> What we ordered for him, the English breakfast, that was $16.99. That does come with a small drink, so we, we chose apple juice and then ordered a big orange juice as well. Something that isn't on the menu openly advertised is just to order a croissant on its own. We ordered this just for me to have. $1.79 is such a good price for a breakfast item, especially in Harry Potter. You can see the size differences here between the juice that you get with the breakfast and one if you pay for it separately. And as if by magic, this is the breakfast that was brought over to us. There's a bit of egg, beans, black pudding, croissant, potatoes for some reason, mushrooms. It was a really good size. It did come out hot. And in the end, Jim had to share it with Jimmy because there was so much food there. The one thing that was like a little bit strange is that black pudding. It looks more like a sausage type black pudding. Like we'd expect it more to be cut into strips. This is the croissant you get. I was expecting this maybe to be a little bit warmer. It was quite cold, but I don't know if that's because I was busy talking before actually talking into it. I didn't use the grape jelly. Jimmy really enjoyed the breakfast. Jim said the black pudding, he was a bit unsure to begin with, but once he ate it, it just tasted like normal black pudding, like as you'd expect. I don't know what we were expecting, but it was all right. We decided to let Jimmy have a try of the black pudding. He had no idea what it was or what it would be like, but fair play to him, he gave it a go, but he wasn't keen. Afterwards, when we told him what it actually was, I think he was quite glad that it wasn't keen, and we may have just traumatised him for life. We really did like the Leaky Cauldron, and I would go there for breakfast again, but I think value-wise, I'd prefer Today Cafe. Next up, we hopped outside the parks onto City Walk, just for a quick service at Moe's Southwest Grill. One good thing about Moe's, if you're with your family, is it's right next to this Panda Express, so if you fancy different things within your party, you can sort of separate up here and eat in the same area. Moe's is like Mexican food, and I'd always describe this as like a Mexican subway, where you can like choose your toppings and things to go onto your tacos or whatever you want, sort of as you go across the front there. What we decided to do here was order two lots of 
three tacos. Reason being three tacos, $9.99, two tacos was $7.99. So a bit of simple maths worked out, you're better off buying two lots of the three. We're always up for a bit of money saving, especially Jim. We made these into meals as well, where you can add a drink and a side item. So we added a bit of guacamole and a cookie as well for Jimmy. We love the seating outside here at Moe's, provided it's not absolutely baking or too hot. It was shaded on this day on the seating area, but we love a bit of people watching and looking down and looking at City Walk. You know, you're in a beautiful place. It seems a shame to sort of sit in a food court style area. The tacos here are really, really nice. I think it's, you know, it's reasonably sort of cheap and cheerful food, but I personally prefer going out here and customizing tacos a little bit than eating maybe a bit of a bog standard taco for a little bit more money in the parks. Jimmy's favorite food in the world is chicken tacos or chicken fajitas, any sort of Mexican food. So he was absolutely buzzing with Mo Southwest Grill. One warning though, Jimmy here in a white t-shirt was a bad idea. Screw, we had to go and buy him a new t-shirt once we left. Next up, we're at one of our favourite table services on City Walk. And this was actually the only table service we did this year on City Walk. And it's Margaritaville. I think this has been here for quite a long time, but we've only eaten here once before and absolutely loved it. Really wanted to come back. It's the table service location that is closest to Islands of Adventure. It's literally just a jump over the bridge. They've got this shop next door as well that sells really, really cool stuff. Even if you're not eating in there, I would go. And if you are eating there, you get $10 off $50 or more if it's the same day and you're popping into the shop after you've eaten. So it's worth keeping hold of your receipt. I love the whole look of it in here, the atmosphere, the music that they play. They've got like a little projector up with uh, music videos playing and every now and then a volcano will erupt and there's this whole flashing light thing and you can see over there in the bar area there's this like drink splendor thing. I have to say I'm a bit of a novice when it comes to Jimmy Buffett and knowing the songs and all the meat, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere and all of this, but it's just a really fun atmosphere so it's still worth going. The menu is really good here and there was quite a few things that we could have ordered and could have eaten but in the end I went for this Caribbean blackened salmon salad and Jim went for cheeseburger in paradise just because I don't know if he's got a song or there's something to do with Jimmy Buffett and cheeseburger in paradise. Jimmy opted for the same off this kids menu and he went for a junior cheeseburger in paradise. This didn't come with the sauce that the adults burger comes with so we did ask for some of that on the side. One thing that's really good for the kids here as well is instead of some crayons and colouring they get these things called wiki sticks that I don't think we have in the UK but it's a lot more entertaining for kids and for me than I would say crayons are. And it's something that you can take away with you as well. And we did, we took them back to the hotel room and stood them up. This is the Caribbean blackened salmon. And I have to say, this is my favorite meal of the whole holiday. There's a like mango in there. It's this like really sweet sort of salad dressing, some avocado peppers. Like there was such a good selection of stuff on the salad and such good flavors. Like I can't even explain just how nice that is. This is Jim's cheeseburger in paradise. He really enjoyed it. He really liked this Paradise Island sauce that it comes with as well. I'm not too sure what it is. I don't know if I'm missing a trick here, but it was a good burger. I don't think you can go too wrong with a burger. There's some of that Paradise Island sauce on the side that Jimmy dipped into, but he really liked it. He was really happy with his burger as well. When we go on holiday, we're not massive burger orderers. I think a lot of people think, oh, America, loads of burgers but there isn't there's so many options in the parks that it doesn't have to be burgers every day here's our bill and i think this is really good value it was 51 dollars 52 including your drinks obviously adding your tip on at the bottom i just thought i'd show you a little bit of inside the shop here they just sell all sorts of funky stuff here's a couple of spirit jerseys they have they've got one in exactly the same style of the disney world one i bought the rose gold one and we loved this beer mat as well. It's just like a big rubber thing that you'd get in a bar. Really cool stuff in there. And we took advantage of that $10 off $50 that you'll see in a later video. Next up, we went for a snack here at Voodoo Donuts. 
I personally was really excited to go here because it wasn't open last time we visited Universal and it looks so funky. For such, you know, quite a small space, they've really gone all out with the decorations and it is so cool to visit. And personally, I was actually quite impressed with the price. I'm not gonna moan that something's too cheap because no doubt they'll put the prices up next time we go, but it is pretty good value snack for all the family. The price of the donuts we had, it was something like $1.50 for my glazed donut. Jim had one that was $1.60. Jimmy's was $3.70, something like that. But for saying we all had our own donuts, I think that's pretty good value. I don't think that's bad at all. Of course, Jimmy had to go for the voodoo one. Me and Jim are pretty simple when it comes to our donuts and we do prefer the rings. I did find these outstanding, that the dough was really light. I don't particularly like heavy food and I thought they were amazing. Jim thought it was a donut. He didn't find it outstanding, but it's still a pretty good value snack for your location that you're in. Next up, we're back at Diagon Alley, and this is another one of our frequent locations that we visit. We absolutely love it. It's Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor, which is opposite Gringotts Bank. We came in here, I wanna say it was about 11 o'clock, it wasn't particularly late and it was empty. Like I didn't even get a chance to film the ice cream or anything because we were straight up there. They do these souvenir cups, which are a couple more dollars, not much more, but they are a really good souvenir to take home and we have got three of them at home from a previous trip. Our favorite place to sit and eat the ice cream is opposite Florian Fortescue's, right next to the bank, sitting on these steps. And luckily there was a bit of shade as we were coming up here this day and we ordered just one cup between the three of us. It was around five, six dollars, not massively expensive. We had a sticky toffee pudding, which is an old favorite of ours, and salty caramel was Jimmy's choice, actually. I was quite surprised, because normally he's a vanilla kind of guy. We prefer getting ice cream in a cup as opposed to a waffle cone, just because it's a little bit easier to share, particularly if you're sharing. And one of the reasons we love this spot is looking down Diagon Alley, looking up and seeing the dragon. It's nice and quiet. There's no sort of three way at the back of those steps, so you can chill. Next, we're over at Springfield for a Lard Lad Donut, which I think everyone's had at some point if you've been to Universal Studios since they got rid of Back to the Future and created Springfield. And this, I, th I think they've put the prices up since last time we came. It's now $7.49 plus tax, which when you think about what we paid at Voodoo Donuts, mm, I think maybe it's a little bit expensive, but it's an absolute classic. We really like this seating area that's behind the Jebediah Springfield statue. Again, you've just got lots to look at. It's a little bit off the beaten track as in through traffic and busy people walking past. It's usually pretty quiet back here. Jim's got the knife there, he cuts it into like little pizza shaped slices just so Jimmy or himself don't get in too much of a mess. It's a really good snack to keep you going till lunchtime, love it. We are now at Volcano Bay and this was on Jimmy's birthday, his eighth birthday, and we went to the premium seating area, which was something we hadn't actually seen before we arrived on this holiday. And what's in the lockbox there is a menu. And what you do is you put up this flag and you have a server who can come and get food for you. I did go to one of the restaurants to see if I could just go and pick it up myself, but it didn't look like they had all of the things we wanted all from one location. So we decided to order it through the server in the end. We opted for three different dishes just because it did all look so nice and Jimmy really fancied chicken tenders. One thing we regret not ordering was the pineapple upside down cake. We just didn't get time, didn't get round to it, but that is for sure in the future. What we ordered from here was the Hawaiian longboard pizza, the chicken tenders, and the island coconut crusted chicken sliders. And here it is. I love how they decorated it with the flowers. I thought that was just a really cute touch. What I ordered personally was the island chicken sliders and they were amazing. One bonus of ordering through that server and having it on your seat in is the view. I mean, look at that, you can't get much better for a dinner. It's probably one of the best views we've had on the holiday. Jim really loved the pizza. I don't think I've ever seen him so happy. <laughs> the jalapenos on it were quite spicy though. It, it was a bit of a spicy one. With the chicken sliders, my only complaint was we weren't given any cutlery and so we had to put all like the coleslaw-y things that come with it on it. 
but the flavour of those sliders, honestly, was delicious. It was absolutely the best thing I've eaten in a water park. The food was great, and if you look at that total there, $43 plus adding on your tip for your server, I mean, it's, you know, it, you may be able to get a table service for not far off that amount of money, because obviously that's not including drinks, but it was good food and it was a great location, so I'm not moaning. Next up, we're over at Portofino Bay, which is one of Universal's hotels. So I've just tailed this on to the end. We came here for one night to take advantage of the express passes on your check-in and check-out day. And when we've previously stayed at Hard Rock, we have used this pool area before because you can pool hop between Hard Rock, Royal Pacific and Portofino Bay. One tip, Portofino Bay has got the best sun loungers with really nice padding. So it is a fantastic pool to come and visit. They have quite a big menu with quite a lot of food options, so we did mull it over for a while and tried to think about what we would fancy. In the end, we decided to play it pretty safe and order a couple of pizzas and a side of fries. The soft drinks here are quite expensive, but you know, you're paying for the location. And here's the pepperoni pizza here. One thing I will say about the pizzas is they do come out red hot and they come with some parmesan cheese that you can see here you can sprinkle on yourself and also some crushed red pepper as well. This is the margarita pizza which was absolutely beautiful. Out of the two this was definitely our favourite, it tasted really fresh, the tomatoes on it were lovely but Jimmy's favourite pizza is a pepperoni. Fries, fries and there's the fries there. <laughs> we did try some of the crushed red pepper on our margarita pizza and then I did a nice bit of flavour, it was quite nice just to try it. I think for sure we would order that margarita pizza again, the pepperoni pizza maybe not, it was just a bit of a bog standard pepperoni pizza. For me there was a little bit too much pepperoni on there, I think Jim would argue that though. Jimmy enjoyed it but he preferred the fries in the end so he ate most of that. For the poolside service they do add on an 18% service charge automatically which is something to be aware of when you're factoring your price of your food. And that's it, thank you so much for watching. We've got another video coming out soon, which is everything we are off-site, including quite a few places on International Drive, which I know is quite popular for people going to Universal. So please subscribe, keep an eye out for that video, and once it is out, I shall link it down below. See you soon. So guys, it's the end of the video, so please like, subscribe, and you know, do all that good stuff, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.